This is the struggle. And it's bigger, I'm sorry my dear brothers if I might sound flippant or rude, but it's bigger than an individual struggle. Yes, we've got the burning heat outside, 18 months fast. How am I going to get wake up for work and get to work on the tube? The tube's going to be sticky, my head's going to be stuck under some man's armpit. That's not really the struggle, really, is it? If you look into the context of the global ummah, the struggle isn't even, I can't really find a spouse yet. Allah will give you that. That's not really the struggle, given the global context. The struggle is not, ah, oh, you know, not a good iftar food this Ramadan. Oh, the chicken shop are closing early. Because I'll open it. No. No. Oh, they got this reciter in in this mosque. Oh, my last year it was better. We had this reciter. Really? Really? Is that really what we're going to reduce our Islamic way of life to? My dear brothers, the struggle is bigger than that. And as Brother Rupa mentioned, the struggle. The degree of the struggle reflects the degree of our obligation, my obligation. And what is this obligation? I'm going to put it in as simply as I can, in about 15 minutes, in as simply as I can. And I'll give you some three basic arguments to tell you what is your obligation and my obligation. Brothers, in Islam we've got individual obligations. I want each and every person in this room, myself included, have to do. They're called your farda'in, your individual obligations. Then you've got what we call your communal or your collective obligations. I.e. the obligation which a few, if a few people do it, then alhamdulillah, no one else has to do it. They can do it if they want to, but no one else has to do it. The sin is off the neck. So ensuring, for example, that there are enough people in the community learning about Islamic knowledge so they can teach others. as a farda kifaya. Second, for example, you know, salat al-janazah, making sure some people are doing that. Things like that, yeah? Things like that. Now, in Islam, when two obligations clash, i.e. when an individual obligation and a collective obligation clash, yeah? The Sharia tells us that your individual obligation comes first. So, for example, let's just say you've got to provide for your family, but you're also in debt, right? The obligation first and foremost for you is to provide for your family. Then you cover your debt. So the Sharia prioritizes for you. If you've got debts and you know you want to go Hajj, Hajj is an individual obligation, right? Everyone has to do Hajj if they're able to, and they've got the financial means and the ability and so on. What happens when the two clash? Well, you've got to relieve your debt. Then, when you're done, you can go to Hajj. So you're exempt from Hajj. But the Sharia tells us what is priority and what is not, not our minds. Now. There are so many collective obligations that have to be fulfilled in Islam. Such as, for example, distributing the zakat. Yeah, this is the month of Ramadan. Zakat of fitr will be collected. But the zakat, the duty on everyone to pay 2.5% on their total wealth if they fulfill a certain, um, if they have more than a certain amount. What they call the nisab. Who's going to collect that and distribute that? Who is going to implement the laws of the sharia, like the hudud? Qisas, what was mentioned in this story. Who's going to implement that? That's a collective obligation. Someone has to implement that. Who's going to ensure that the, the people, the populace is educated and so on and so on and so on. And these collective obligations build up. My dear brothers, how are, we, how are the Muslims going to do all their obligations? How are they? There's so many collective obligations. So what the ulama teach us is that, look, we have to look at that one thing that's going to allow us to do all of our obligations. And the thing that is going to allow us to do all of our obligations and fulfill them and do them correctly is to have a sulta or a quwa or an imara, a political power. And this, in the Islamic term, is the imama or the khilafa. Because this is the way in which all the sharia is going to be implemented. What about the collective obligation of khayru, khayru ummatin ukhrizat linnas? Kuntum khayru ummatin ukhrizat linnas? You are the best nation raised up for mankind. You command to what is right, and you forbid what is wrong, and you believe in Allah. How are we going to do that obligation? How are we going to carry da'wah to the rest of the world? Not via satellite channel, sorry, you're not. No, not just via talk. Doesn't matter how much money you collect either, or how many people you convert here in East London or the Olympic Stadium or wherever it is. 
Doesn't matter how many people convert, you still cannot carry the da'wah the way the da'wah is supposed to be carried and spread it to the rest of the world. Remove any obstacles for the da'wah. The only way you're going to do that is through a political entity, a state, a dawla. And in our language, we call that the imama or the khilafa. That is what's going to ensure the protection of the deen and the spread of Islam. And it's also going to ensure that the lives of the Muslim blood, and any life actually, is sacred. Protect life. It will remove any f foreign occupation, like what's happening still in Palestine. It's going to bring back the izzah and the dignity of the Muslims. It's going to bring back, it's going to strengthen and embolden the Muslims, the Muslim army. Implement all the obligations that you and I are responsible to have implemented. Because ruling by Islam, ruling by the Sharia is not a choice. Muslims don't have a choice. We have to. وَمَنَ يَحْكُمُ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَئِكُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ وَمَنَ لَمْ يَحْكُمُ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأُولَئِكُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ فَأُولَئِكُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ زَعَى يَمْنَشُنَ فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُ حَتَّى يُحْكِمُوا فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ Allah says, whoever rules by with anything than what Allah has revealed, that person is either a kafir, a fasik, or a zalim. And never will anyone have true belief, true iman, until they make Rasulullah al-Hakim in all the affairs. وَلَا يَجِدْ فِي حَرَجَ مِمَّا قَدَيْتْ وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا And they don't find any haraj or any, you know, disagreement. وَيُسَلِّمُ تَسْلِيمًا And submit entirely. So there are some things that enable us to do lots of other things. And there is one thing that enables us to do all of our obligations. All of our collective obligations. Because which one do you choose now? You don't have the right to choose. I don't have the right to choose which fard I'm going to leave and which fard I'm going to do. You don't have that right, I don't have that right. So Allah, so all the indications in the text tell us that what is it, what is it that thing that's going to help implement all of our obligations? It is the Dawla Islamiyah, the Khilafah. That's not because I, I'm saying so, but that's because our scholars have told us that. Because by this thing, all the wajibat, all of our obligations will be implemented. So that becomes a'adhamul fard. That becomes now the greatest obligation then, because because of this obligation, I'm not going to have all these other obligations that Allah has, has made a mandatory on us to implement. made mandatory on us to implement. So this becomes the biggest obligation. And that is your obligation, my dear brothers. That is my obligation. That we must work to bring back this authority. That is the brute point that I want to make. Everyone in this room, no one is excused. No one is excused. Because this is now is the most paramount obligation. By it, we will bring back our Islamic culture, our dignity. We will raise, uh, bring back our standards of life. Liberate our lands. Restore the supremacy of Islam. Because this is why Islam came. Doesn't matter what everyone else thinks, they might not like it, or they detest it. But this is why Allah sent this deen down, so it can prevail and be supreme over all other religions, all other ways of life. So the obligation then is to work to bring back this authority. Now bringing back this authority, my dear brothers, it's not a one-man show, right? It's not a man into a state. Yeah? It's not one person cannot realise this obligation. It's impossible. On one man on his jays cannot do it. Doesn't matter how good a speaker he is. Doesn't matter how knowledgeable he is. Doesn't matter. This is not something that is achievable by one person. It has to be done collectively. And the ulama talk about the ayah in Surah Ali Imran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلْتَكُمْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَيَنْهَوْنَ عَلَى الْمُنْكَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Obligation. And we need to join the work. We need to join the work that is calling to bring back this authority. We have to work collectively as a group, not as one person who's going to try and do it by himself. 
That's not how Rasulullah did it. That's not how any Anbiya did it actually. Look at Musa alayhi salam. Was Musa alayhi salam doing da'wah by himself? No. He asked for Harun. And Allah says, you know, we gave Harun alayhi salam your brother. And we gave the gift for you, your brother Harun, to be a prophet as well with you, to give the da'wah to Fir'aun. And of course, Musa alayhi salam had his followers. Isa alayhi salam, Hawariyun were with him, his disciples were with him when he was giving his, 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 his call. Rasulullah the same, the Sahaba were with him and they coalesced around him. They went out in society, calling people, changing the societies, the thoughts and the ideas to make people understand that they need to remove their connection from Quraysh. They need to sever their connection from Quraysh and come back to Islam, to, to the Islamic standard. So this is what we have to do. This is what we have to do. We have no choice. It's not a choice, my dear brothers. This is the biggest obligation. Because by this establishing this obligation, all the obligations of Islam will be established. All the collective obligations that we are required to implement by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's command. So I'll wrap it up there. Um, Insha'Allah, and I know if there's any questions or answers, if you want to take them, some of them now or later, we could do that. But you're, you're in charge. Barakallahu <laughs> feekum. Shukran. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fadlis. 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 Uh, until we break our fast, so we don't have much time for maybe something that can be elaborated on. But if any brothers have any questions, if they'd like to ask anything, uh, we will answer them now, inshallah, and also after iftar, after Salat al Maghrib, after we break our fast, after we have our iftar, inshallah. Uh, I just want to make two quick points actually. Uh, one is that for pursuing Islamic knowledge, to actually learn about Adi to study the Islamic history, to study Arabic, to study any of these fields of knowledge. There's an institution called Abduha Institute where Brother Saf is part of one of the instructors, one of the teachers there. Your brothers are all welcome to sign up for any of the courses that they have. They have a school set up just outside this hall. And uh, secondly, for the uh, clipboard that's going around, is for the brothers that are local because we have da'wah uh, amongst this community. We have da'wah schools. And we have uh, Qiyam as well that we've had for, I think, running up to about six, seven years now. So if you want to pray with us, study with us, learn with us, and discuss with us, inshallah, then fill in that form on that uh, uh, clipboard, inshallah, and we'll be in touch. So if anyone's got any questions, or we could leave this, yeah. if someone wants to do a start. We'll get, we'll never go. We've got an elderly image. Where's Aula Dubai? Yalla, yalla. Bismillah. Aula Dubai. Oh, one more thing. And also, brothers, please donate generously to Umar Welfare Trust who are also there regarding Mr. Fast, yeah? Please make sure that you donate generously to uh, Umar Welfare Trust who are outside just there as well. Allahumma <laughs>
إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر.